Are you wondering why I look like this? Today I'm going to teach you how to look like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Trim your mustache and grow your beard. Some people keep this part, that's fine. If you want to trim that, that's okay as well. And grow your beard out, make it wide and thick. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a wide beard that covered part of his chest. Some people, they narrow it down like a needle. Don't do that. That's not part of the sunnah. Your hair, it must be parted in the middle. The Prophet Sallallahu parted his hair evenly in the middle and then he stuck his hair behind his ears. SubhanAllah. Beautiful man. So that his two ears, they say they were bright and they shined like the moon. When it got down to his shoulders, he used to braid it. So if your hair is down to your shoulders, then you can braid it as well. Another thing he used to do was use kohal in his eyes. As you can see, my eyes have kohal. It wasn't only on Fridays or when he was about to sleep, but it was also on a regular basis because the climate was hot and it was sunny. So in the summer, you could practice that as well. Of course, I don't do it justice because he was a trillion times more beautiful than me. But this is the manliest, most beautiful and most clean way to look for a man as it's following the sunnah. Nothing is better than following the sunnah. So let's all follow the sunnah and smile at sunnah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? If you're new here, my name is Raiz. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So, mashallah, those brothers looking great. I think these are the types of looks we should emulate, you know? I mean, instead of wearing what uh, Western popular culture uh, tells us to wear and, and tells us how to dress really, I think these are the types of uh, looks we should be going for. Alhamdulillah, I think I have my, my looks going well here, the beard and the, uh, I don't know, my, my hair is uh, all one length, I would say. So, alhamdulillah, <laughs> um, this is good. So, inshallah, let us all strive to be like this. So let's see what else this video has in store for us. Jazakallah khair. You know, sometimes the Muslims are so obsessed with is the chicken halal or not? Who slaughtered it? Where did it come from? Was the blood drained properly? Let me see the certificate. Let me see the certificate of the certificate. Who signed the certificate? Let me find them. Tell me their shoe size. Tell me everything about them. And that same guy who's so obsessed with how the chicken was slaughtered is okay with collecting riba. The same guy is not making payment, is lying about his taxes, cheating people, not giving his customer his due. That's haram too, bro. So if you, if you get your haram money and buy halal chicken, <laughs> That's still not halal chicken, you understand? <laughs>
phone for one. I mean, it could be very intimate, it could be very, uh, you know, simple, and that doesn't take the speciality away from it. I think it can still be sanctimonious, uh, but I mean, to be extravagant about it, I think uh, that money can be invested in something else, something better perhaps with a couple. think it's better for her not to be out in the workplace or even at uh, tertiary institutions, educational institutions. I, I get a lot of uh, trouble for that, but uh, this is my opinion. I feel that women are better off without tertiary education, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't get education, but tertiary education, especially Western secular uh, spaces, which are the current uh, or majority of the universities out in the West, uh, I'd say it's best for them to stay away from it. And on that note guys, Jazakallah khair for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe and keep following the channel. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.